turn to Luke, guess what chapter? Chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And while you're turning there, you know, it dawned on me that so many times people look at the accounts in the Bible as just stories, just Bible stories. But folks, these are actual accounts. These were real, real people. They, they experienced all these things that we see in the Word of God. Literally, they experienced those things. And with that, I want us to think today about the shepherds. Can you imagine the feeling and the thoughts that went through their mind when they looked in that manger and saw the Creator of the universe. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Luke chapter 2. The title of my message is Thoughts of the Shepherds. Luke chapter 2, begin reading with verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, how my heart thrills as I read these words that God I have read so many times over the years. God, I thank you. I thank you for that night, that night when shepherds came. I thank you, Father, that, God, it's real, it's true. And, Father, it happened just like you said. And Father, I pray, I pray, Lord, as we think on this, as we ponder this, I pray, Lord, that God, thy Holy Spirit, would work in our hearts. And God, this would not be just a story. God, that we might see, that we might feel what those shepherds felt as they gazed in that manger. Father, have your way. Glorify thy Son. Lord, meet every need in this house. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. Oh, what a night that was. What a night. What a night, beloved, when lowly shepherds were visited by the angel of the Lord. Folks, he came to them suddenly, unexpectedly. And he came bringing a message of good tidings, of, of great joy, which would be to all people. And, beloved, the message was this. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, 
which is Christ the Lord. Beloved, the angel, the angel, the angel said, You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying uh, in a manger. And suddenly, beloved, the sky was full of the heavenly host. Uh, praising God, saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Then as suddenly as they had appeared, the angels were gone. And the darkness of that night surrounded the shepherds once again. But so amazed, beloved, were they at, at what they had seen and what they had heard that they did the unthinkable thing for a shepherd to do. They left their sheep. The sheep were their lives. It was, it was, it was everything to them. But they left the sheep. They had to. Because, beloved, they, they had to find this Savior that the angels had sang about. They had to see Christ the Lord. So off they went to find, beloved, a babe lying in a manger in Bethlehem. You know, I have tried. I have tried. Now, I do this often in, when I'm reading the Bible. I've tried to imagine what it must have been like when they found the Lord. Folks, I, I can see them in my mind's eye, but love it as they, they, they uh, uh, timidly approach that manger. They see the mother, they see the father, but that's not why they come. They came to see what's in the manger. And I can see them, beloved, reverently approaching that manger and, 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 and so, so meekly, beloved, stopping and looking to see. And there, beloved, in the flickering, flickering light of a torch, they see the face of God, of God. Oh, what, a, what thoughts must have filled their minds, beloved, as, as uh, they, they gazed on the promised king, the one who had been promised from ages of old. But you know, we don't know what they thought, do we? Because the Bible does not tell us. But I can tell you, beloved, the thoughts that I would have had if I had been one of those shepherds. Folks, had I been in their place, looking upon the promised Messiah. My first thought would have been, God has not forsaken us. God has not forsaken us. You say, why would you think that? Folks, those shepherds lived in dark, dark, evil times. Times, beloved, when it seemed that, that they had been abandoned by God. I mean, they had not, beloved, had a prophet speak to them for the last 400 years. Before that, there were prophets galore, but for 400 years, Israel had heard nothing from God. Nothing. And the people thought to themselves, why? Has God forsaken us? Has God forgotten us? And during that 400-year period, Israel, beloved, had suffered so, so many evil things in the wars between the Seleucid Empire and the Egyptian Empire. Israel was caught in the middle between those two empires. And as these two great empires warred once against another, beloved, Israel would be conquered by one and then conquered by the other. And every time they'd be conquered, Jews would die, would die. Each time, Israel would suffer. And Israel would say, God has forsaken us. God has forgotten us. 
Then finally, the Seleucid Empire won out with control over Israel. And it looked like, beloved, maybe, maybe, maybe peace would come to the Jews. Oh, but then arose another. Antiochus Epiphanes, the king of the Seleucid Empire. He came, and he gave that name to himself. You know what that name means? I am God. I am God. This evil em emperor came uh, 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 on the throne and immediately, beloved, he began to try to do away with the Jews' religion. I mean all types of terrible things. He forbid the reading of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. He forbid it. No one could read it anymore. He put, beloved, his own man as priest, one who would do as he said, beloved, in the temple. He forbid, beloved, circumcision among the Jews that God had commanded them to do. He forbid it. Listen. He built an altar to Zeus in the temple. And beloved, he, he, he sacrificed a pig, an unclean animal to the Jews. He sacrificed a pig in the temple of God and offered it to Zeus. Things got so bad that finally the Jews revolted. And that began the Maccabean Wars, or the Maccabean War. And in about 164 B.C., beloved, the Jews won their independence. The Jews were free. But that didn't mean that the troubles were over. Oh, no, listen, they were just beginning. Because, you see, beloved, during this time, two great sects had, had arisen, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And these two, beloved, they, they were vying for power, power over the people, over the Jews. And, beloved, it got so bad that, beloved, they started killing Killing anyone who didn't want to be or, or wasn't a Sadducee. Killing anybody who didn't want to be or wasn't a Pharisee. And they literally had a civil war among the Jews. And many died. Much was destroyed. The murders and the graft and the corruption got so bad that finally both sects appeared, beloved, or uh, appealed to Rome. Rome was an up-and-coming power. And they appealed to Rome to step in and to, to, to end the bloodshed that was going on in Israel. And oh, let me tell you, Rome was just glad to hear that because that's what they were about, conquering and controlling nations. So Rome, beloved, was now in charge over Israel. Rome, beloved, made an Edomine, listen to me, an Edomine king over Israel, not a Jew, an Edomine. And his name was Herod the Great. Beloved, Herod was as evil a man as you would ever want to see. He was a man who was insecure, beloved, who was, who was paranoid, who, was, who was, was controlled by fits of jealousy. And if he thought anybody, anybody had their eye on his throne, he'd have them killed. Had his own sons killed because he thought that they wanted his throne. So under, beloved, the iron rule of Rome and the evil Herod, many Jews felt God has forsaken us. 
God hasn't spoke to us in 400 years. And especially, was that true of poor shepherds? I mean, beloved, they were the lowest of the low. They were the poorest of the poor. They, they, beloved, were the outcast of society. If you wanted to see the lowest thing in Israel, they would point to a shepherd. They would point to a shepherd. Oh, but the angel of the Lord had come to them. Amen. The angel of the Lord had brought them the message. He had delivered the glad tidings to the dredges of humanity, the lowest of the low. And now, beloved, after 400 years of silence from God, they looked on the face of God. Oh, listen, if I had been them, I would have thought, praise God, praise God. He hasn't forsaken us. Praise the Lord. He's come down to us. He's come down to save us, the angel said. He hasn't deserted us. He still loves us. Next, if I had been in the shepherd's place, I would have thought, see him. See the Savior. Oh, God has honored the faith of his people. Of his people. Oh, how long, how long had believers looked, beloved, for this moment, this moment, the moment prophesied in the garden of Eden. The the seed of woman will come, they said, and there he lay. The, 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 The moment, beloved, prophesied by the patriarchs of old, by Abraham and Jacob and Moses and David and Solomon. The moment, the moment foretold by Jeremiah and Daniel and Isaiah and Ezekiel and Michael and all the prophets. And here they were, gazing, beloved, on the fulfillment of so many promises that God had made. The Christ had come. He, he's honored the faith of his believers. He's honored the faith. You see, folks, he had come despite all the unbelief from the world. Oh, listen, from the very beginning, the very beginning, Cain didn't believe, but Seth did, amen? He did. Then, beloved, the, 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 the days of Noah, the whole world didn't believe God. They didn't believe, but Noah and his family, they did they did. In the days after the flood, again, the world, beloved, didn't believe God. But Job did. Job said, I will see him uh, in the flesh. I will see him. I will see him. Abraham did and was obedient. In the days of Moses, Egypt and the world didn't believe God. Pharaoh said, who is God that I should let his people go? But Moses did. He believed. And Israel did. Along came David. And the Philistines didn't believe, nor the world, but beloved, David believed and Israel believed. Then came a time when Israel stopped believing. When they stopped believing. Then a hundred years later, Judah stopped believing. Oh, but through it all, beloved, there were those who did believe. Like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Daniel and Ezekiel and the three Hebrew children and Ezra and Nehemiah and others. They did believe. 
Folks, God always, always had his remnant of believers. And it was always, beloved, the many against the few. The many who didn't believe against the few who did believe. And folks, that's the way it was when Jesus was born. God had, they thought, abandoned them. So, beloved, in their hearts, they had abandoned God. They had abandoned God. The two major sects, the Sadducees, were liberal. They did not believe in miracles. They did not believe in angels. They did not believe in the resurrection from the dead. And this was one of the major religious groups. The Pharisees, beloved, who believed, beloved, in their own self-righteousness and not in the promises of God. Now listen, the only ones who still believe, for most, for most people, the only ones who still believe in the power of God and the promises of God were the poor and the sick and the lowly, and the destitute. That's why Jesus went, beloved, to the poor, and the sick, and the lowly, and the destitute. That's why. That's why. The, the beloved, the, the, they, they, except for these, no one believed anymore. Men, beloved, like the shepherds who stood over that manger. So if I had been one of them, I would have thought, look at this. Look at this. So many over the centuries have not believed, but we believe. And here he is, the Messiah, the promise of God. Come, come to those who believe. Oh, how God honors the faith of his believing people. How he honors that faith. How God blesses those of us who will not be as the masses are, who will not do as the masses do, but who will believe his promises no matter what. No matter what. The third thought, the third thought that would have entered my mind had I been one of the shepherds is this. As I gazed on the Christ child, I think, oh, oh, the hope, the hope of my believing heart is justified. It's justified. Folks, it was the hope of Messiah coming that kept men and women like the shepherds going, beloved, in those hard, dark, uh, uh, weary times that they lived. It was to hope that Messiah would come. Beloved, their lives were hard. Every day, beloved, they would pick up their weary, weary bodies and say, hey, maybe today, maybe Messiah will come today. It'll be better when Messiah comes. Every day they'd eat that small morsel of bread. And they say, maybe, maybe Messiah will come today. It'll be better when Messiah comes. It'll be better. And so it was with all who believed, beloved. You see, they all had that hope. That poor fisherman that goes out and fishes all night and catches nothing. And he comes, beloved, and sees his family waiting on the shore knowing that they have nothing to eat. Tear runs from his eyes. And he says, maybe today, maybe today Messiah will come and my family won't hunger anymore. Maybe today. That suffering leper 
with his fingers falling off. Hadn't seen his family in so long because he can't see them. And he sits and he cries. And he says, maybe today, maybe today Messiah will come and he will make me Maybe this day, Messiah will appear. So much suffering, so much pain, so much hurt, so much want. Oh, how how did they continue, beloved, in those difficult, those uh, in their difficulties, in their sickness, in their sorrows, in their trials? How did they continue? How did they face a new day of suffering? Only one way. They had that hope. (laughs) That assurance, that's what the word means. That assurance that one day Messiah would come and he would make everything right that was wrong in this world. He would make it right. And it could be today. And as those shepherds, beloved, put on their ragged clothes that night to watch the sheep, and they went about the monotony of tending those sheep, beloved, as they thought on the on the the misery of their their existence, their 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 ever present hope of maybe tonight entered their minds. And lo and behold, suddenly. There was the angel of the Lord and he looked at these lowly men and he said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. As their hearts, beloved, just almost explode with excitement. They say, oh, we got to go. We got to go fast. And as fast as our weary legs can find, can move us. And, and, and we have got to find Messiah. And they run. And finally, they see the manger. And in trepidation, they approach and they look down on their blessed hope. There he is. Today all these weary uh, weary days of, uh, of hoping today is justified. It's justified today. Because there before me is he is he who is my blessed hope. Everything will be better now. Somebody says, Preacher, is that what the shepherds thought as they gazed on Jesus? We don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. But I believe so. I believe so. With all my heart, I believe this. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Folks, now you follow me. As those shepherds looked on Jesus, it was the first phase, the first phase of his first coming. It was the first phase. Why do you say that? Because the child had to grow up. He had, to, he had to be baptized. He had to have his ministry. He had to go to the cross. But beloved, first he had to come born of a babe, of a virgin as a babe. They, beloved, this was the first phase of his coming. Of his first coming. But guess what? Y'all ready for this? You know, don't you? He's coming again. He's coming again. Now let this sink in. It very well could be that you and I as believers, beloved, could see him at the first 
phase of his second coming. Preacher, what's the first phase of his second coming? The rapture. The rapture when he calls us out of this world. And oh, let me tell you, if, beloved, we would hear a trumpet sound, it's not going to happen like this, but if we would hear a trumpet sound and run outside to see what's going on and look up in the sky and see Jesus in the air, beloved, what would I think? I think, oh, he has not forsaken us. We live in such an evil, wicked world, but he's not forsaken us because he's going to take us out away from the sin and evil of this world. Whoa! I think he's come. And all the faith that we have held to in troublesome times where we have clung to, he, beloved, has, has, has honored that faith because there he is just like he said. Just like he said. I think the hope, the hope that has kept me going over these many years, beloved, no matter how much I have had to suffer, no matter what I've had to endure, no matter, and I, believe me, it has not been easy all the time. The hope that I have is justified. It's justified. There he is because I see my blessed hope before me. I see him before me. This is what I think when he comes in the first phase of his second coming. But if you don't believe, you won't see him. You won't see him. You'll miss his second coming like Herod and the Pharisees and Israel missed his first coming. Oh, but if you believe, if you believe, I got a feeling you're going to be thinking those thoughts too when you see him in the air. Those who believe and receive him will see him when he comes and will rejoice and be glad forever, ever, ever more. We'll be glad. Aren't you glad you're a believer? Aren't you glad you're saved? And if you're not, oh, you need to come. You need to receive him. You need to do it because we know not the day or the hour when our Lord will appear. We don't know. I think he's already, I think he's already, beloved, standing up, ready to step out in the clouds. I believe that. I want you to stand with me. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Oh, I wish I could paint a picture for you. Of those shepherds standing in that torchlight. Looking at Jesus. I wish we could see the expressions on their faces. I say, look at the one that was promised, the one that God said would come. I wish we could read their thoughts and what they're thinking. And beloved, whatever it was, you can believe their hearts were leaping for joy inside. Christian, is your heart leaping for joy? Because Jesus came born of a virgin. 
What are you thinking? As you look on that day in your mind's eye, what are you thinking? If you're thinking what you should, I can tell you, you'll be praising God. You'll be, you'll be worshiping Him. You'll be thanking Him with all your being. And if you don't believe, oh, let me tell you, you need to come and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we ask you to have your way in every heart. God, we are so weak. We know what we feel in our heart, but God, getting it out to the people, sometimes, Lord, it seems impossible to Father, we know we can't do it without thy Holy Spirit working. And I ask thy Spirit to work now in every heart that's here. Help us to see ourselves as the shepherds were that night. God, help us to think the thoughts that they would have thought. Because we are standing, I believe, Lord, on the verge of the first phase of your second coming. Have thy way in every heart. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed, we invite you to come.